The Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. Operation Solid Lives, or OSL, is a free, highly effective, and proven system of discipleship developed by Pastor Jerry Dearman. Over 170 churches, in addition to The Rock, currently use OSL discipleship in the U.S., as well as hundreds of churches in 11 countries worldwide. Thousands of people to date have had their lives transformed through OSL, not because of a program, but because OSL is designed to saturate you with the Word of God, drawing you into a deeper relationship with Jesus. Experience how easy it is to start level one of Operation Solid Lives absolutely free. Visit oslonline.com, then click on Get Started. You'll have the option to lead an OSL small group with a few of your friends and family, or you can take OSL as an individual. It's only four weeks and it's free of charge online. Join the thousands of people who've had their lives transformed. Get started today by going to oslonline.com. This series is intended by God to be sent to you to impact and attach to your life to alter things from now into your future. In other words, God's saying, what I'm about to speak to you, I want to come to pass in your life. I'm not telling you so you'll know it. I'm telling you so that it becomes a part of you from here on out. And we're talking about the blessing. So let me tell you what we're going to cover in this series the blessing of an open heaven. I want to tell you what it is. Focusing on the blessing, what is the blessing? I want to tell you how it helps you. I want to tell you why you don't want to trade the blessing for anything in this world. I want to tell you how to unlock it, how to increase it, why it's even more special for us in the New Testament than it was in the Old Testament. And I want to tell you how to steward this blessing so that you don't limit it or abuse it. God wants this blessing to function in your life day in, day out, week in, week out, and year in, year out, all through the rest of your life. So let's get to part one today. Today's lesson is called, What is the Blessing? Just that simple. I want to define for you in such clear terms so that you know exactly what the blessing is. By the time you leave today, you're going to know what it is and hopefully have a yearning in your heart to say, I want that on my life. Malachi chapter 3 is where I ask you to turn first. And I want us to read out loud verses 10 and 11. If you don't have the New King James Version with you, that's okay. There are a lot of good ones. But follow along on the screen so we can all read the same words as we read aloud. Everyone together, Malachi 3, verses 10 and 11. This is God speaking. Let's all read. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Let's stop there. Now I want to focus on the blessing. God says, try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing. I'll pour out blessing. Notice it's not blessings, plural. It's blessing, singular. God said, I want to pour out such blessing. We're talking about one blessing. One blessing. This word blessing is the Hebrew word barakah. The emphasis, the accent is on the last syllable, baraka. Sometimes we say baraka. Really doesn't matter, but it's pronounced baraka. And it comes from, some of you would guess, the word bless or to bless, which you've heard before in either a name or a teaching, comes from the word barak. And let me tell you what it means to bless, to barak someone. 
The word Barak means to endue with power for success, prosperity, fecundity. Fecundity means fertility and fruitfulness, both with offspring, with children, and fruitfulness in your life. And it also means longevity. So the word blessing, Baraka, is really an empowerment that God gives you, an empowerment for success, for your prosperity, for fruitfulness, for longevity and protection. Now, the moment you bring up prosperity, some people instantly say, wait a minute, is this going to an extreme? Is this going overboard? And the reason that people think that is because no message has been more abused from the Bible than the message of prosperity. I don't believe that most people that teach prosperity are abusing it, but there have been some who have abused it. The Bible warns not only about the dangers of the love of money, the deceitfulness of riches, and greed, but the Bible also warns those that teach and those that minister not to use the gospel as a cloak for covetousness. In other words, in your heart, you're after money and you're using the scriptures about God blessing and providing for people to gain something for yourself. There are warnings, strict warnings in the Bible about that. And so that's why some people cringe and they begin to shrink back and wonder when anybody brings the message. And we should be concerned about those things because the Bible warns about those things. But right on the other hand, there are so many people who are struggling in the financial realm and the Bible is filled with truth about a loving God who not only cares about saving us and forgiving us of our sins, but about helping us in our everyday lives. And that includes in our financial provision. And so for teachers and preachers not to teach it and preach it straight from the Bible as God intended it to be taught, that limits the people of God from hearing the word of the Lord and then receiving the blessing that God wants them to receive. And so we need to teach this. People are so desperate to hear this truth and this message. And I believe it's going to be a blessing to your life. But we do need to use caution and not take it to an extreme and allow some carnal craving inside of us to try to exploit these truths and these messages. You're going to find out that when the blessing of God attaches to you and you understand it and embrace it, you are instantly less greedy. You don't clutch anymore. You don't grasp anymore because you're not concerned anymore because you know you're taken care of. You may not see it all with your eyes, but you know it's okay. I'm covered. So I don't need to always get the best end of the deal. I don't need to take advantage of people anymore. See, the blessing will not just change your status. It'll change your heart and help you to be more like God. I'll show you that in just a moment. Now, the very first time that this word baraka appears in Scripture is when God spoke to a man named Abram that most of us know as Abraham. And in Genesis 12, 2, God says to Abram, I will make you a great nation. Everybody say great nation. great nation. I will bless you. That word bless is barak. That's the root word for baraka. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing, a baraka. The first time baraka is used, it's God telling Abraham, I'm actually going to make you the baraka. In other words, I'm going to attach this blessing to your life. And what's going to happen is you're going to be the one that's blessing. You're blessing other people. You know, the, the best part of blessing in your own life is being able to bless other people. Did you know that? That's the best part is being able to bless other people. And so the Lord says, I'll bless you, make your name great. You shall be a blessing. Verse 3 I will bless Barak, those who bless Barak you. I will bless those who bless you. Now this is why, even though there are many implications in the current dealings between Israel and its enemies, we always have to remember, but there's a difference between Israel and every other nation of the world. And that is that Israel are, is the descendants of Abraham 
who have received a blessing from God, and God says, I'll bless those who bless you, but I'll curse him who curses you. So even though God loves the whole world and wants everybody to be saved, he loves everybody alike, he made a covenant with Israel to bless those who bless him. So that's why we need to be careful in sorting all of that complex situation out in our hearts and minds that we're not violating the blessing of God and therefore bringing a curse on ourselves unnecessarily. Somebody say amen to this. This is so important. We need to bless Israel not because we agree with all of their actions, but because God put a blessing on them and is in favor in certain areas, in certain covenants that he's made with them. So God says, I'll bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, Abram, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Barak. In other words, through you, the Messiah is going to come and everybody in the world has the privilege of being saved through Messiah if they accept him because of you, Abram. This is a big deal. This blessing not only impacted Abram, it impacted the entire world. The entire world. Now, this blessing is so powerful, it affects every part of your life. Every part. Let me go through five parts of your life, and I put some together in categories. First of all, financial provision. I realize that some people have a sensitivity to this, but I'm telling you, if all you do is read the Bible, you will be convinced. One person said, the Bible is so simple, you need help to misunderstand it. The problem is there's a lot of help out there. But I'm telling you, if you just read the Bible, this is so simple. God has a heart to bless you. God has a heart to bless you. Think of what Jesus said. Jesus said, don't you realize that your Father in heaven feeds the birds of the world every day? And then he said this, and don't you realize that you're so much more valuable to him than they are? And so if God makes sure that he feeds all those little birds of the world every day, Jesus is saying, don't you know he'll never overlook you? See, he's trying to convince us that God wants to help us and bless us. In fact, Jesus told us that God gets pleasure out of giving. God gets pleasure out of giving. For those of you that have grown up at all from being a child, you would know that Christmas and gift giving at Christmas is no longer as exciting when you're talking about what you got. What's exciting is what you gave. And when somebody opens something up and their eyes light up and they look at you and they look at other people and they're so thrilled about what you gave, that brings more joy to you than what you got. How many of you know that's true? You try to keep it nonchalant. You try to stay cool. But inside, you're saying, yeah, yeah. Why is that? Because there's a pleasure that comes from meeting somebody else's need that the selfish heart does not embrace. But God knows this pleasure. Here's what Jesus said. He said, fear not, little flock. It gives your father great pleasure to give you the kingdom. God gets no pleasure when we try to bless him. You can't bless God and make him any better, higher, wealthier. There's nothing you can do. What really blesses God is when he helps you, and you receive that blessing, and it blesses your life, and you're thankful for it. That really brings God great pleasure. So financial provision. How many of you have ever done something dumb to get money? Come on, raise your hand. I look back and realize, oh man, I did some dumb things to get money. Whether it be a dumb loan or some dumb investment or dumb scheme or whatever it was, or you cheated on something and got caught, but you were doing it to gain money. I remember early in our marriage, we had a very, very low income and we saved up $300 to go clothes shopping. And we weren't about to go to the mall and pay those prices. We were going to go down to Los Angeles to the garment district and negotiate and get the best deals and to maximize our $300. So we went down there and found our parking. We got onto the street and began to walk. We were just there a few minutes. And I'm walking down the street and I see a little crowd on the sidewalk. So I just kind of peeked over the shoulders to see what was going on. And there was a guy on the sidewalk with a milk crate that was st stood up. And he had three little playing cards, two black-faced, one red-faced. And he was 
flipping them around, and people were gambling to see if they could pick which was the red card after he swapped them around. So Kimberly's like, come on, aren't we going shopping? And, and it's like, hey, hang on just a second. So I'm looking, and, I, and so I'm watching these guys lose. They're pointing to the wrong card. So in my mind, I'm just thinking, I'm going to see if I can track that red card. And I watched it, and I, I tracked it. I knew exactly where it was. So the guy finished flipping around. He looked at a guy, and he said, where is it? And the guy, the guy said, it's that one right there. I knew it wasn't that one right there. He went on to the next guy. Where is it? And the guy pointed the same one. It's that one right there. And then he looked at me. He said, where is it? So I said, it's that one right there. I pointed to a different one. He said, put the money on the table. Well, I was watching those guys throw $20 bills down and such, and he was taking their money. Well, I didn't have a $20 bill. All I had in my pocket was three $100 bills. And the thought hit me. My wife's going to be so blessed that I added another $100 <laughs> to our shopping budget. And so before I knew what I was doing, I flipped out a $100 bill and set it down there. And he flipped that card over and had some kind of black magic on it because that red card turned to black. He snatched my $100 off of that milk crate, turned around and started shoving it in his sock. Have you ever had a sinking feeling in your heart? <laughs> Not only was I sinking because I just lost one of the $300 that we had been saving up all this time, but there's somebody next to me that might kill me. <laughs> and really, the disappointment just caused my heart to sink. Well, let me just tell you something about me. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. <laughs> and I thought, I, I, I can't walk away without that $100. And so I'm standing there thinking, I got to get it back. I got to get it back. Now, oh, yeah, you guys are saying, oh, you remember where I talked to you about your dumb stuff, huh? <laughs> Let's get you up here and tell your story, okay? <laughs> so, so here's what happened. So I'm there, and I'm thinking, oh, no, I don't even want to talk to my wife right now. I'm embarrassed, you know, something. I got to get it back. I got to get it back. And what happened was, all of a sudden, over here, I heard this loud voice from a homeless man talking to my wife. And here's what it sounded like. He said, get your husband out of here before he lose all his money. That's exactly what he said. Get him out of here before he lose all his money. And she started pulling on my arm to leave. And I was trying to tell her, I was saying, honey, we, I, I got to get it back here. She goes, let's go, let's go. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. And God spoke through a homeless man that day. <laughs> and my wife and I had some good conversations that day. <laughs> you know, I thank God that I'm not a gambler. Because I don't like to lose. I don't like to quit until I win. Somebody said recently, there's one sure way to leave Vegas with a small fortune. And that's to show up there with a large fortune. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. When, when you understand the blessing of God, you don't need to rely on schemes and techniques and all these risky things anymore. The Lord wants to attach something to your life that takes you up to another realm. Now, it doesn't mean that other people don't see certain things as risky. I'm just saying God wants to attach something to you called his blessing. And that blessing takes you out of the fear that causes you to do dumb stuff. Dumb stuff. And you begin to walk in the wisdom and the favor of God. Now, listen to Proverbs 10.22. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Listen again. The blessing of the Lord. Notice it doesn't say the blessings. We're talking about the blessing. This empowerment. This empowerment to be successful. This empowerment to overcome. This help, supernatural help. 
The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Now, when you hear rich, don't think that God's trying to make you a greedy, selfish person that just hoards and hoards and gets more and more. No. See, it affects your heart. When the blessing of God comes on you and you realize there's no need to hoard. Doesn't mean you can't say, but there's no need to hoard. Because you have the blessing and it'll never go away. See, you, you're already set. You're okay. You've got the Lord. See? And so the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. What does that mean? That means that when you try to bring blessing on yourself, it may instantly feel like blessing, but eventually the sorrow comes. How many of you have taken advantage of the no payments until and learned how fast until comes when you take advantage of that? You got blessed instantly. Hey, we got our new flat screen. We got our new refrigerator. We got our new car. And then, in a matter of time, every month, the sorrow comes. <laughs> the blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Okay, there's no bad aftertaste when you do things the Lord's way. Well, listen to what happened in Abram's life. God spoke to Abram, and he said, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing in chapter 12. In chapter 13, notice verse 2, the Bible says, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Another translation said Abraham became very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Now, I'm so glad God spelled this out because there are some people who always like to over-spiritualize things. And when you're talking about the blessing of God, they want to say, well, that's talking about spiritual blessings. <laughs> well, certainly we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, Ephesians 1.3. But the Bible says that the blessing of God is an empowerment that attaches to our life. And one of the things that it brings is financial blessing. Notice, livestock, silver, and gold. Do you think that's spiritual livestock? <laughs> spiritual silver and spiritual gold? I don't think so. So God is spelling out very clearly for us a result of what happens a result of what happens. If you read about Abraham, you'll find out that he was a very honest and fair person. Even when he was buying the plot of land to bury his wife Sarah, he wanted to pay full price for it. He negotiated up to pay full price for it. Listen to me. The blessing does something to you to where you don't want to take advantage of people anymore. You want to make sure that they walk away feeling good about the relationship. See, fear causes you to take advantage of people because you're afraid you'll run out. But when you have the blessing and confidence in that blessing, it causes you to want everybody to walk away wanting to do business with you again. Did you know that's how God is? Whenever you come into a transaction, an agreement, an encounter, an experience with God, God's status didn't improve. Yours did. And that's God's heart. He wants you to walk away blessed every time you come into contact with him. And that's what God wants for our life, that we have that heart where we want people to walk away being blessed that they came into interaction and transaction and agreement with us, not walking away thinking and saying, he took advantage of me. He squeezed me. I had no choice. He put me in the corner. God wants people to walk away knowing when they get around you, they're blessed. They're blessed. You may be in a tough financial spot right now, but I want to tell you very clearly from the Holy Spirit, God wants to deliver you from that tough spot. God wants to lift you up and put you back on your feet. God wants to increase you. God wants to promote you. The blessing of the Lord will pull you up from living paycheck to paycheck and the blessing of the Lord, this empowerment that attaches to your life, will pull you completely out of debt. In fact, can we just agree right now that we're going to receive this word of the Lord during this series to the point that it puts us on a trajectory that everybody is completely out of debt. Everybody. Can we agree on that? Now that was a portion of the message, What is the Blessing? And it's part of this brand new series that we've just begun called The Blessing of an Open Heaven. So what is the blessing? Well, the Hebrew word blessing is the word barakah. 
And baraka includes supernatural financial provision, supernatural favor, supernatural promotion, supernatural fruitfulness, supernatural protection, and longevity. And it also includes supernatural business savvy. So the next few programs, I'm going to be teaching you about the blessing of an open heaven. And as a special thank you, I want to send you this companion series to the blessing of an open heaven called Living Under an Open Heaven. This is a seven-part video series that can be used either as a small group series or as a personal Bible study. So for a gift of any amount, I'll send you this seven-part video series and it comes with this complimentary workbook. And to receive this video series and the workbook, just call 1-800-544-8000. It's right there on your screen. Or you can go to jerrydearman.com and click on Living Under an Open Heaven and we'll get it right out to you. Well, don't forget to set your DVR so that you don't miss any of these programs. And remember that God is always faithful. It's no secret that we're living in difficult times. But do you know that when you draw near to God, because He loves you, He wants to bless you. God's desire is to bless His children and to abundantly supply for every part of your life. If you've enjoyed today's message, Pastor Jerry would like to send you a special companion series titled, Living Under an Open Heaven. This series consists of seven life-transforming video messages on two DVDs with a bonus study guide. We've received many testimonies from people whose lives have changed as a result of the Living Under an Open Heaven series, and Pastor Jerry would like you to have it for a gift of any amount. Just call 1-800-544-8000 now or go to jerrydearman.com to receive this special Living Under an Open Heaven video series and bonus study guide, and expect God to open the heavens above you. Your gift of any amount will ensure that this special series is delivered to you right away. Call 1-800-544-8000 or go to jerrydearman.com. We're so glad you've joined us today for Solid Life with Jerry Dearman. Our prayer is that you have been inspired to believe that God is always faithful to fulfill His promises in your life. If you have a prayer request or testimony you would like to share, visit us online at jerrydearman.com. Write to us at Jerry Dearman Ministries, P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California, 92803, or call us at 1-800-544-8000. If you or someone you know is in the Southern California area, we'd love to have you join us for services this weekend. The Rock is located at 295 East Orange Thorpe Avenue in Anaheim with service times on Sundays at 9 and 11.30 a.m. and Sunday Night Live at 6 p.m. Spanish and Vietnamese services are also available. Go to jerrydearman.com for more information or for one of our other locations nationwide. We have exciting Treasure Island and J12 for Kids dedicated to raising up a generation that will change our world. We offer impactful services for kids of all ages with anointed worship and life-changing teaching. For more information about The Rock or Jerry Dearman Ministries, visit us online at jerrydearman.com or call us at 1-800-544-8000.